All right, welcome back. Hey, Willow. Hey. <laughs> Figured I'd join you. <laughs> Yay, you are looking beautiful yeah. today. Uh, I apologize. I, I tried to follow according to the list that we released of the paint night stuff. Um, I'm just going to go with what I have at, at my disposal right now. So, yeah. That works. <laughs> I mean, so I made a list and I was very extensive, but um, you can kind of wing it if you don't have everything on the list, <laughs> which I know is your style, Willow. So it's perfect. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> With cosplay and life. Uh. <laughs> that is the way to be. So as I put out there, we are doing a Gotham City skyline. But if you're not a Batman fan, you can add anything you want in the sky or on these treetops. And because skylines are a little tricky for me, I printed out this little um, visual guide for myself. So the first thing we're doing is making our cardstock um template okay if you don't have cardstock you can just use your pencil to draw straight on your canvas i'm not gonna tell anyone <laughs> it's not the end of the world uh <laughs> so the big thing to figure out is when you look at your canvas you want to figure out where your skyline is going to end to leave enough room for your sky so i want my skyline to end right about here this is an art thing where you don't want to divide up your picture 50 50 it just if you have 50 percent of your picture being one thing and another i don't know if i'm describing that well but it just is not visually appealing so usually if you do two-thirds of the picture is taken up by buildings and one third is taken up by sky it just makes for a more visually interesting picture and i would have the correct terminology but it's been years since i've taken fine art class <laughs> So I'm using my ruler because I suck at straight lines, but also these buildings are going to be shadowed. If you don't do perfectly straight lines, no one's going to care. So, and you definitely do not want your buildings to be all the same height. So I'm going to basically use my ruler to, first of all, draw across where I decided the highest is going to be and cut up my cardstock so I don't make any buildings that are taller. You also don't want your buildings to be the same, the exact same width, because if you go to a city, the buildings are not the same height, they're not the same width. It just would look very weird if they weren't. And if we're kind of looking at this as a guide, some of these buildings have a, you know, a little bit of space in between them. So that will give it a little bit more of a natural city-like feel. And you can always draw uh, inspiration from your own city or city near you if, if that's what you like. Uh, so I, I'm going to try to add a little bit of winnipeg into my picture but i love it <laughs> we definitely with the way winnipeg has been turning into uh when it comes to crime we definitely need our batman <laughs> hear that cosplayers no no we're not we're not promoting <laughs> vigilantism on here officially wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> And by the way, feel free to make the joke. I do look like Little Orphan Annie more than Bob Ross, and I'm <laughs> okay with that. Uh, I'm naturally fair-skinned and Irish, and so, of course, this wig is more Auburn. So well, it I, was bound to happen. <laughs> I put it on, I laugh. I, like, I was trying very hard not to sing, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> I love you, tomorrow. <laughs> It's all right. I made the joke on Instagram and Facebook already. And <laughs> I laughed very hard when I put on the wig. I was like, of course I don't look like Bob Ross. Of course I look like Little Orphan Annie. I've got freckles. I've got fair skin. This was bound to happen. This was going to happen. You just lean into it. There are no accidents. Only happy red curls, I guess. <laughs> 
And I cheated and printed out my bat symbol. Oh, okay. Because I knew we were going to be pressed for time. Um, <laughs> bat symbols are not the hardest thing to draw, but if you print out your bat symbol, that is okay. If your bat symbol is not perfect, remember this is something that is being cast into the sky. It's not going to look perfect. I just basically printed it out for expediency. The trick, of course, if you're cutting out a bat symbol template is that you want to fold whatever you're cutting it out of in half. All right. So we have our template, which, of course, is not quite wide enough for my my canvas, which is fine. I, I'm just hand drawing. What you guys are hearing is, is uh, that that scratchiness is me hand drawing my cityscape. Perfect. And then if you are drawing one in the daytime, this is going to be a little harder since it's nighttime, but it's sometimes nice to layer the buildings. But since it's a shadow, the layering is not really going to show up that well. So. For this last little bit, I am doing a little more hand drawing. All right, so now we have our building. So now let's get our symbol in the air. And anybody who is painting along with this, please, please send me a picture of your painting. I really want to see how they turn out. Absolutely. Now, like I said, if you're more of a Marvel fan, you could do like Human Torch drawing a flaming four in the sky. If you're a Superman fan, you could do Superman flying through the sky with um, terminal these buildings into the Daily Planet. There's so many things you could do. If you feel comfortable drawing superheroes, like you could put pretty much any of Marvel's flying superheroes in the sky, put a Jean Grey Phoenix over the sky. A lot, a lot you could do with this. So when I'm painting, I always, or I usually try to start with my lighter colors, just because painting a darker color over a lighter color, they usually disappear. Whereas if I mess up with the lighter color, the darker color will hide it. So we're going to do our bat light. So just do an oval encompassing this bat symbol. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a light in the sky. So it's going to get a little distorted as it hits clouds. So how we came up with having a paint <laughs> night uh, is uh, uh, Kelly was <laughs> asking what should we do for one of our panels? We need we need to fill some spots, and it's like, well, I've been sitting on this idea 
of doing a dollar store paint night. And I brought it up to a couple of my friends as an idea, and they just kind of sat on the idea, brought it up to Kelly, and she goes, I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> Quite honestly, I've been looking forward to this all weekend because painting is really calming to me. So I'm like, this is my de-stress time. You know, I've never done it in front of an audience, so this is a little strange, but whatever. And it be fun. So, literally, you can get, like, like if you're not a painter and you're just learning his stuff, the dollar store has pretty much everything you need. Yeah, well, and I got, so this is a set of 12. I got this from Michael's for, I think, six bucks. Okay. Now, you have to look. Michael's also has higher-end paints, and um, you can also go to Walmart. Like, you can get less expensive paints, and there's nothing wrong, especially when you're starting out and just playing around. There's nothing wrong with less expensive paints, especially when you're talking acrylics. Like, less expensive paints paint just as well. The big thing you'll find as you get more into it is just coverage. So, like... Yeah. And I mean, like, I bought a, a ready, uh, an already printed canvas a while back mm -hmm. to test myself on painting, and it was fun. Like, I I enjoyed, I enjoyed it uh, doing it, but definitely, um, uh, it was definitely missing something. Like the the flowers that I painted did have a, a, the detail that it needed. So I kind of improvised on it. Um, I bought this paint set from uh, Walmart uh, mm -hmm. a couple months back. Is that the one you're using tonight? Yeah. Nice. And so right now I'm just trying to get my night sky to be a color that I like. And I'm picky with my night sky colors because, of course, we're going to have the fillings are going to be a pretty, pretty black. Which I'm going to highlight them with gray so they have some definition. And the night sky can't be black, too. <laughs> it just can't. So a little picky about. So I'm combining blue and black and purple until I just get a color that I'm happy with. But since this is a comic art, it's totally okay if it's a little more stylized. So it's okay if it's a brighter blue, which I think I'm gonna end up going with. And these being slightly less expensive paints, they do need to be shaken up. <laughs> the biggest problem I'll have with the less expensive paints is just that I need more layers sometimes to get a nice clean. Color. Yeah. Um, I sometimes will add a little bit of water to mine to uh, for it to look a little less chunky, I guess. Yeah, to get more uh, of, less of the brush stroke. You will not see the pretentious uh, wording that most artists will use that know how to do this stuff <laughs> here. That's not happening. <laughs> I mean, we're painting Gotham City, and I'm wearing a little orphaning any wig, so I, I don't think we're pretentious here. <laughs> it's all good. I think this is the color I'm going to go with. So I also have my water here. I'm going to first get around all my buildings. So I'm using a sharper paintbrush just to get my details. And then I'll get my bigger brush wet to spread over a larger spot. I will be right back. Sounds good.
And during this slightly boring part, I am going to talk about color theory because there's not a lot I can talk about my painting that I'm doing. Um, welcome back, Willow. Oh, welcome back, Willow. <laughs> I was just going to talk about color theory and okay. tell people more. From, uh, well, color theory in terms of comic books. <laughs> and mm. my dad's taking a picture of me because I'm painting over my dad's. Hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to tell people more than they need to know about the way old comics coded characters because I find this fascinating. So old comics had, they had less access to printing colors as we know. And so they had to, I mean, any art, any visual art communicates a lot with color. Yeah. Like anyone who thinks they don't, doesn't understand color theory. But so old comics, because they had such a limited color palette, they really color coded their characters. So Good characters were primary colors, um, some combination of primary colors, and evil characters were some combination of green, purple, and orange. Specifically, a lot of evil characters were green and purple. Mm -hmm. So I just find it interesting that um, people are like, oh, there sure are a lot of characters who wear purple who are evil. And I'm like, that's on purpose. That's on purpose. That's... <laughs> color coding these characters. So uh, now obviously that's changed a bit and like they branched out more and, but it's very interesting when you look at the old comics and just how they color coded those characters. I don't know, I, I love that stuff. Let's, now I can start spreading a little more liberally. Once I get done spreading this and let it dry a little bit, I'm going to put clouds in the sky. I don't like my skies to be all one color. That's really <laughs> to me visually. So, so it also is fine that you can kind of see a little bit of the colors I've mixed in here. It's not a completely smooth. Nothing wrong with that. If you look at the night sky, especially shortly after sunset, it not all one color. No, no, it is not. Okay, let's get my medium paintbrush out again around So Kelly, how, when did you start painting? Oh boy. Um, I've been painting for as long as I can remember. Art's just always been kind of one of my things that I've loved. And in school for a while there, I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer. So that means taking a lot of fine art classes. So uh, that's where I learned a lot of the color theory. Not. Not specifically the comic book thing, but you learn a lot of like things about the color wheel, things about specifically how to use color to communicate yeah. and emotions. And it definitely one of my first loves, even before writing, which is saying something. <laughs> what about you? I this is a new hobby for you, right? This is definitely a new hobby. Like I've it, like Throughout the pandemic, I tried to do little eh, little things. Like I, I tried to learn how to knit and crochet, and I don't have the dexterity for it. <laughs> like my, I don't have the coordination at all. <laughs> That's a lot. So, um, so I mean, I'll probably try to go back to it, but you know, I. I, I should really finish up some of the costumes that I've started, <laughs> but oh, let's um, <laughs> unfinished costume. No, we can't. We can't. I, 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 you know what? I, I got. 
I got so many, it, I, I got so many ideas on the go, but I want to clean my house first. I also want to like, move into my new, like move my computer into uh, my office and make that my thing. But I don't know. It's just now with the painting thing, I'm just like, you know what? This is, this is a great way to relax after work. If I get, if I have a frustrated, you know, frustrating day, I can just, you know, sit down with a, with a dollar store canvas and just start painting something. Isn't it so nice? Like, you know, I stopped doing it for years though. When I um, got out of school, I just stopped doing it. Whether I didn't have the space, part of it was that I was being such a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. so when I started doing it again, I let go of that because one of the things was I thought I had to be a realistic, I had to paint things like they looked and it's okay for paint yeah. to be like, there's a whole impressionist movement and I'm not going to compare myself to the great impressionists, but if they can just paint their impressions of things, I think I'm doing okay. Yeah. And then once I let go of that perfectionism, then it's become cathartic again. And it's one of my favorite, yeah. ways. It, favorite it, ways to unwind when I have time, which is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> What's time? Uh, do you, do you paint with your children at all? Yes. My daughter loves to paint. So there have been times when I've sat down and painted and then she'll like paint on the painting with me, which is really cute. My son likes painting sometimes too. Okay. So yeah, my kids are very creative. Oh, neat. So my son's biggest love is software programming. Huh. Yeah, he's really smart. He discovered MIT has like a website geared for kids. And he discovered that so he's um, 10. He discovered that like four years ago and just started playing around on there. So like it, it's kid friendly, but yeah, he, that's what he does. A lot of times for fun is he just programs himself stuff. He'll spend tons of time on their programming stuff. And just okay. that one when, cause he wrote the code to make the cat dance or whatever. It's huh. Wild. That's impressive. Yeah. And how old are your children again? Uh, 10 and then my daughter is turning 12 next week. Wow. Yeah. Having a big birthday party? We haven't planned one yet. And the pandemic's uh, getting worse again here. So probably not a big oh. one, but we'll have a small family thing. Hey, there's nothing wrong with small birthdays. Yeah, but my daughter loves parties, so we're going to do <laughs> Well, you guys can plan a big a big gathering once all this mess is over. Yeah. Hopefully soon. We keep hoping. Yeah. All right. So... Yeah, my bat symbol's little bleeding a little, which again is okay because it's in the clouds. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna start my buildings. I'm gonna go with the black base and then I can um, just kind of give them gray outlines. So I'm gonna use this like medium sized pointy brush because I can do details with this, but it'll also cover a little more area. There we go. And I need way more black. How's yours going, Willow? Um, it's going. <laughs> I, I know I have uh, paint brushes around here. I just wasn't sure where exactly I put them. Uh, so I'm using whatever ones I have in my kit. <laughs> Am 
am I going at an okay pace or am I going too fast? Oh no, you're fine. Okay. I'm just having fun. <laughs> That's the important thing. I'm trying to go fast enough to finish at least most of this. So originally this painting was going to be our uh, surprise prize. And then Camille so generously offered to donate her um, Smallville magazines, which will be signed. So those are going to be our surprise prize, which I have no complaints about. That was really sweet of her. But if you all still want to win this painting when I'm done, donate and tell us. We could always up sweeten the surprise pot. Send us an email. Tell us you specifically want to win my pro or win my painting, or that you specifically want to win Camille's Smallville magazines. They look really neat. She sent us some pictures. That was that is awesome. So sweet of her. All our guests have been like really nice this weekend, both backstage and on stage. That that. That's the great thing, like being able to sit in and listen to some of the conversations that have been happening the last couple of days and learning so much from them, uh, too. And, you know, it, it's funny how we tend, we, you know, we say that we'll, we're geeking out over them, uh, and they will, they often say that they're geeking out over us because they see our costumes and mm -hmm. they're excited to see us dress up as their characters. I have to say getting Noah's seal of approval on Crayley's and my Eve and Cassandra from the librarian's costumes. Nice. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> he was very sweet, very sweet. That was amazing. And oh gosh, hearing Stacy tell stories about Valerie's life. She has lived a life. And she sounds like just this amazing woman with this amazing spirit and kind heart. And if y'all haven't donated yet, you should. Please do. Because Valerie is beloved by just about everyone who's worked with her. That's why so many of these wonderful celebrities showed up. And her body of work means so much to so many of us. She's more than just Miss Tessmacher, that's for sure. Yeah. And if you were just tuning in, we are doing <laughs> Bob Ross Painting Hour and learning how to paint the Gotham City skyline. And our skyline is starting to take shape here, so that's exciting. <laughs> I feel like this is also kind of a speed painting. How long, how long are Bob Ross's videos? His shows. <laughs> I, trying to I love his stuff. Yeah. Like I, it's kind of sad that you know, we're learning to appreciate his stuff now that he has passed. Yes. And he's been, he was doing his stuff for like, what, how long has, was he on TV for like 30 years? Fun Bob Ross fact, um, his hair was naturally straight. Huh. He permed it. I don't remember why, but for some reason. And um, then it became his iconic look and like he had to just keep perming it for the rest of his life. Oh, that poor man. I know. Uh, like I have natural curly hair. I, I couldn't imagine. No. <laughs> curling what? it every day just for that. Perms are not a fun thing to do. They are, they are not. My my grandma was uh, obsessed, and okay, like in the nineties, late 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 eighties, early nineties, perms were just the uh, the fashion craze that everybody. Oh. Why? Was, everybody needed a perm, and my grandma, for some reason, 
took me and my sisters to get permed. Even though you um, have hair. And my sister, my sister Shannon has red hair just like you. And it, yeah, little orphan Annie. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, that's what, my hair was more red when I was younger. And that's literally what I looked like. Because it was red. It was curly. And like... I, I remember hearing that uh, Sh uh, like Shannon did not like her perm. Well, rightfully so. Um, but I think she she went to a hair salon and asked them to straighten it right away because she was not happy. <laughs> oh, and that does a number on your hair. Like, your hair is not meant to take that abuse, people. <laughs> I'm so glad that we got away from the 90s and all the <laughs> unnatural trends of the 90s. For well, although, although it's still hard uh, to find a hair salon or hairstylist that actually knows about curly hair mm -hmm. um, that is willing to style my hair as curly and cut it as uh, for, for the curls. I agree. And they're like, oh, it, it looks fa fantastic straight. Well, good, but uh, I'm going to have the triangle effect when my hair, <laughs> whenever I wash my hair and the curls start coming out. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I've, I like my, I like my hair short. It's easier to manage. Mm -hmm. But I know, like, guys are like, oh, no, but it, women with long hair, is it, it's sexy. And it's like. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> we you guys have any hair. idea what it's like to, to be a girl living in a, a like a warmer climate who has curly hair? <laughs> right. All right. So now I'm adding a little bit of decoration to my building tops and yeah my hand-eye coordination is not the greatest especially after a long weekend so these are not going to be beautiful they're not going to be the best but that's okay we're having fun <laughs> let's see what else we have oh it's still on the flag This may be a painting that I end up messing with even after this broadcast because some people on this broadcast are perfectionists. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying very hard not to be, and I'm trying very hard to be forgiving that, you know, I'm not going to have like a, this fantastically awesome painting at the end especially when we're doing something so quick but the great thing is we can go back and and work on it afterwards yeah and, well, and sometimes you have to let the paint dry and see what it looks like and then go back and add def or you know layers and yeah i usually do let the paint dry and then add more detail and also giving myself that kind of distance. Because also sometimes when you just step back, the painting looks better. Mm, yeah. The whole thing. I find that is true with my costumes too. <laughs> when you're so close to a work, you just can't, cannot appreciate it until you step back and see it for what it really looks like and see the whole picture and see it through new eyes. Yeah. I, I think we, I think it, we got to be a little bit more forgiving on ourselves, but Agreed. sometimes it's, yeah, sometimes I, I can understand like uh, 
our minds are built to be like, okay, we're going to learn something and we don't give ourselves the credit that we're still learning how to do something. We want to be yes. perfect the first time. And yeah. And we definitely just, do not compare yourself to someone who's been doing this for years. <laughs> don't do that. That way lies madness. Yeah. Uh, no, like I'm, I'm definitely not anywhere near Kelly's talent. <laughs> And there are people who are way more talented than me because they didn't give up doing this for like decades or a decade. <laughs> so I'm at right now I'm adding a little bit of purple just because my buildings are looking a little colorless, which yes, they are silhouettes, but I want them to have a little pop of color. So just a little bit of purple mixed with gray. That may be a little too much. And then just kind of dab the brush. Just gives it a little, little definition. And I'm kind of liking how my sky has turned, is turning out, but I'm going to give it another, now that it's had time to dry, I'm going to give it another layer of blue. And I'm going to paint in, um, a circular motion because I'm going to add clouds after it dries a second time. Because you know what? Gotham City doesn't have good weather. No. It's cloudy. No, it cloudy. So we'll get this lovely cloudy effect. That is, this is actually my favorite way to do skies anyways. It just gives it this nice sense of motion to the painting. It also, then it doesn't look like brush strokes so much as it looks like it's on purpose, which it yeah. is. And it just, it, very pleasing to the eye, in my opinion. We appreciate your comments, guys. I am uh, I'm looking at it. I'm sorry we're not putting it putting you guys up on the screen. We do appreciate uh, you. Our hands are a little busy right now, but we love you all. <laughs> Ryan, Christian, uh, Cre uh wow. <laughs> Keisha, we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for your guys's uh comments and uh, Ryan, I, I appreciate your knowledge and uh keisha we're i can't wait to do another like i i honestly cannot wait for our next episode of uh cryptic crunch i'm what is the next episode about we're talking about aliens oh <gasps> yes so. and when is the next episode um let's plug it yeah well okay so i i realized that uh next weekend would uh, is technically our uh, like um, our after dark episode, mm -hmm. so it's the next episode of uh, Cryptid Crunch will be uh, the sixth, February sixth. Nice. All right. So right now, I am. Just giving a little bit more of a white glow to this, which I probably should have waited for my blue to dry. <laughs> it's kind of mixing in. That's fine. Because white, at least if you have a okay white, it'll yeah. um, it'll pop over darker colors. Most light colors won't, but white will pop. So I'm gonna give this a little bit, a few minutes to dry. Right. And actually looking at the screen, you can kind of see how my buildings have a little bit of definition because I added it. It looks great. great. Like, I mean, you. like there's You're looking good too. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Aw. I added the bridge that uh Thank you, Keisha. The the and cool Christmas little... Joy of Painting was on from nineteen eighty three to nineteen eighty nineteen ninety four. Thank you, Kristen. Oh, I thought it was longer than that. I think he had another show before that. If that I makes sense. Correctly. Yeah. 
Thank you, Ryan. Aw, thanks, Lacey. I'm gonna give a little bit more. Yeah, waiting for the paint to dry is not my strong suit either. <laughs> painting. So while I do, but while I do this, I can do the a um, little bit of brushing. Okay, so I had too much on my brush here, but that's okay because. If you get too much on your brush when you're doing the clouds, then you can just get the darker color and go over it and just kind of blend it in. And get your happy little clouds over Gotham City. <laughs> Ooh, I'm liking this brush. It's splaying out quite nicely when I'm applying a little bit of pressure and that's giving like a nice just cloudy look. I don't know what type of clouds because <laughs> it's been a long time since I've taken classes on the weather. I can't what is what is the allergy for weather? I don't know. I need to catch up on my allergies, I'm sure. Okay. Well, hi, Rusty. What's up? Okay, so that is dry. That's good. All right, so now that that's, um, now that my buildings are mostly dry, I can do windows. Because <laughs> I'm sure you're thinking those buildings look a little wrong. <laughs> those. And again, these don't have to be perfect. Just... No, no, they do not. Dot, 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 dot. I mean, I would love for them to be perfect, let's be real, but that is not how I live my life. Anyone who knows me knows that. And what I did is I mixed some white with my yellow to help pop a little more. I don't know. Oh, I'm covering it. But um, if you mix white with your yellow, that helps it to pop over the dark colors. Because otherwise the yellow will often just disappear, especially cheaper paint yellow is thinner. Yeah. But being light, it needs to have white mixed in anyway, so it's more like whites and things. Um, I just want out for this pink brush has a pointed mouth. Oh, <laughs> I have brush over here. Just see me reaching. Yeah, I, have, I want a pointier tipped pink brush. This one's a little smaller, a little sharper. Do that. Okay. <laughs> nice thing about me switching paint brushes is that this one being smaller, I can make my windows different sizes. Also, Make your windows in different patterns because if you look at the side of a building, there's not going to be windows everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes they have big portions of walls that don't have windows. So I'm going to have a portion of wall on this building that just doesn't have windows.
it's just gonna look weird if it's too symmetrical, if that makes sense. This one is going to go with the longer windows. So what costume are you working on now? I am almost done with Green Lantern version of Black Canary. Ooh. Uh, what else am I working on? I think that's the big one. What about you? Nothing this far, but I think I'm going <laughs> to, I think I'm about ready to uh, start working on uh, my Elvira uh, burlesque costume again. Ooh. Uh, I'm, I, I'm feeling braver than I was when I thought, Hey, let's work with sequins. <laughs> uh, <laughs> First time. So I think I have a way to tackle, uh, tackle it. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So I kind of, <laughs> I kind of got angry with it and uh, put it away. <laughs> Sometimes you need to do that. Oh, Carl, <laughs> I changed out of my Robin cosplay. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a good cosplay? You couldn't even tell it was me. I even changed my voice. Yeah, I, poor dog, I completely forgot to even change the name, so. So I said, here you go. Here's my laptop. Have fun. It was fun chatting with him, though. Like, He's such a good guy. He's my con son. <laughs> we we went to C2E2. And um, he and my friend Kayla are, well, he's young enough to be my son. <laughs> Carl says it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be my friend Kayla or... Um, technically both young enough to be my children. <laughs> so we joked that I was their con mom and um, I was bothering them about hydrating on the last day. And both of them were like, I was like, when was the last time you drank water? <laughs> this morning when we left the hotel room. Ooh. I know. So Kayla, I got to drink some a bottle of water and then we met up with Doug at like two in the afternoon, we're walking by a water cooler. And I'm like, do either of you need a drink? And Kayla's like, no, I'm good. I was like, okay, you're fine. I made you drink water like half an hour ago. <laughs> you're fine. I'm like, Doug, when was the last time you drank water? This morning when we left the hotel. I'm like, all of a sudden- Drink my mom, now. <laughs> my mom voice came out. I don't even know where it came from. I was like, <laughs> Douglas? Go drink some water now. Or no, it wasn't even that. I was like, Doug, let's go hydrate now. And like people within several <laughs> feet, like a 20 foot vicinity, were probably like, what? Dang, that lady's yelling at her kid good. Like, what is going on? <laughs> like my by that point, my costume was off. I think I was maybe half dressed in my costume. I was oh. wearing clothes, Carl. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it, but yeah. Lacey wants to know what uh, what conventions are we planning on uh, going to this year? Uh, I am going to be a guest at CILCon in Illinois in September, which is a horror themed con. It's a really small con, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited because I love I love smaller cons, and um, I know one of my friends is helping to run it. And I'm so excited. And I'm hoping to do C2E2 again. Hopefully one of the indie cons, maybe indie pop con. What about you, Willow? Um, well, I know there 
was a gaming convention happening next weekend. Uh, uh, so I don't know if Joe and I will go and check it out. We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, uh, Game of Toba is happening. As far as I know, it's still happening. Um, and uh, so we'll see what happens uh, with the restrictions and our government. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, our big convention isn't until October. So I'm going to probably be living vicariously through you guys <laughs> and all your events <laughs> for the year. So we can, we can send you lots of pictures and stories. <laughs> yes. We'll see. Uh, I'll get if you guys, that. if you guys end up, uh, going live. Oh, Keisha. It's a Keisha. That's right. It's almost time. Oh, and wow. What? Hey, Keisha. What's happening? Oh, I love you guys for popping me up on the screen right as I'm blowing my nose. <laughs> oh, that, that that's okay. I caught Johnny picking his nose earlier. <laughs> hey, at least I had a Kleenex of some sort. <laughs> All right. Well, I think this is basically done aside from like some picking. I'll do it at later. Yeah. I will definitely be working on mine throughout the uh, evening, but yeah, there's. Okay. But I love the way they turned out. <laughs> Thank you. Willow, yours looks so good. Oh my gosh. You did amazing. Like seriously, Willow, if I didn't know that you had just started, I <laughs> have been doing this for a while. Uh, I used to be uh, an avid uh, uh, hand painter as a kid. <laughs> you I, you could not take me away from the from the painting table. <laughs> finger paint. Yeah. See, we could have done a finger painting one. Maybe that'll be next year. <laughs> oh yeah, my husband would have enjoyed that. <laughs> Guys, I'm making a quick three second Keisha uh, painting with my pen and yes. my notebook paper. So <laughs> that way I can enjoy <laughs> the fun times. I want I want to add that to the prizes. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, you can gladly have that for the prizes. It's turning <laughs> out great, by the way. I love it. Okay. Oh, I learned windows. that. <laughs> Lauren says, say magnifique. Say Monique. That's right. I can pronounce things in French sometimes. You could definitely tell that I art for a living. Look at how beautiful that is. Best one. <laughs> Best. I really good for like a three second painting. That's amazing. I feel like I should like I've been watching on and off because uh, I wrote it in the uh, the uh, private chat for back of the zero box. But um, so like I've been in and out, and I'm like, dude, I really wanted to paint that. I even have like the things. Well, but I didn't get to it. Watch the re or you can watch the rerun and paint along. That is true. And then take a picture and send it to me because I want to see. <laughs> you know what? I actually will. I'll do that later because I've got to I've got to paint. Painting is great. Please do. Well, uh, we have one last panel. So I am going to uh, Will, are you gonna stick around for the DC movies panel or uh, do it? You know Willow. what? Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. I don't well, know then. how long I'm going to be able to stay. I understand. Okay. You've had a long day, Keisha, and I loved it. I'm here <laughs> for all the Keisha and all the Willow. <laughs> and I'm going to give our real quick spiel, and then I will bring Tyler on screen. Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. Um, in case you're, you don't know where you are, you got lost, 
you're watching the multiverse fundraiser and here is a little video about our cause and how you can help the multiverse fundraiser is a benefit for oscar nominated actress valerie perrine ms perrine is known for her roles in superman slaughterhouse five lenny and so many more We've teamed up with documentary director Stacy Souther to raise money for Valerie's medical expenses and other needs. Every donation and every post share gives you the chance to win super prizes. Go to the website listed for details.